You're welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Let's now talk politics and 2023. Um, Southern Governor's stance regarding that big day and that big year is that the presidency should be um, rotated to the South. And we've been waiting, waiting to see what the Northern Governors have to say about that. And uh, in their meeting yesterday in Kaduna, they came together to speak in one voice to basically uh, back the federal government um, regarding VAT and to say that they reject zoning to the South for 2023. According to them, they say it is against the Constitution. And let's now invite our Mr. Inko Taria as well as Mr. Ahmed Buhari for more on this. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. I'd like to begin with Mr. Buhari. Um, how would you respond to um, the Northern Governors, their stance on this matter? Hello. Good morning, everyone. Um, it's good to be here again. This is what I think, yeah? Um, I personally have been supporting the notion that a Southern president should emerge in uh, 2023. I just think for equity, fairness, and some balance, and some sense of belonging, that that should happen. But these things don't just happen like that. They are called, there are things that would have to happen within the political space. And so, someone like myself, and some other people in the North who are very, very firm on the fact that maybe there should be a power rotation, which is not cited in the Constitution, but just for the sake of morality, and inclusiveness, that uh, power should be shifted to the South. Would have expected that the Southern governors or whoever is interested in becoming the president in 2023, which, I, which in all honesty, I think it's an issue that is not as important as, you know, good governance that we should be giving to our people at present. But that also at that particular time, I, I would have expected that rather than go on and say we are a regional set of governors and this is what we must get, we want to have a southern president and it's a must in 2023. I think the right thing to have done was to sit down with governors from the north. They have what they call the governor's forum. They sit down and they, they negotiate. That is what politics is about. You talk to each other, you negotiate, you work around it just because you want to get something. You know, my ideology for politics is very simple. Sometimes and most times you have to stoop low to conquer. But by the time you go out to say outright that, look, we must bring power to the north or to the south. And there's a problem because if you if you look at the history, there are times when the north has actually rallied around a particular candidate from the south and we gave him all our support. Why did we do that? Because some talking went down because we discussed, because we agreed and because we then decided to move forward to support a particular candidate. It happened in 1999. The entire north supported. Mr. Buhari, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Yeah, we lost you for a minute. Please continue. I said very clearly that because this is politics, it has no other space to be discussed but under the political space. I would have expected that these southern governors sit down with northern governors and negotiate this thing out. Okay. But by the time you come out to make blanket statements like must come to the south, then you now see some people in the north who naturally would have been very happy to find the southern and come, come up in 20. 2023 say you know what this doesn't have to be a must nobody has come to talk to me even in those individual states in the south nobody comes out to say i must be governor mm. you go around the local government you go around the stakeholders you negotiate you talk to them you win their sympathy you win their their understanding you bring superior argument to the table you don't just say must when this thing came up last year i did mention it to, uh, on this particular platform and i said very clearly i said look this is going to be very bad if all these governors are friends, if all these governors sit together, then the, the reasonable thing for all of them to do is to say, you know what, this is what we want, but this, how do we go about this? We don't make blanket statements, we talk to each other. That okay, is what Mr. Buhari, is about. Buhari, that's noted. Let's bring in Mr. Inkotara for his own um, response to that. Mr. Inkotara, can you hear us? Yes, clearly, loud and clear. Okay, how do you respond to the Northern Governor's stance? Um, against power rotation to the South for 2023? Well, first, while I will completely agree with the tenor of the argument of uh, Mr. Buhari, I dissent when it comes to his submission. Yes, I agree, it all has to do with confabulation, it has to do with negotiation, 
It has to do with lobbying and what have you. That's what politics is all about. But let us not be oblivious of the fact that there is no part of this country that can produce a president without the support of, his, of all the sections of the country, especially the North. And so when the Southern governors, I don't know why we'll be quarreling with the word must or shall, as if it is mandatory. When the Southern governors are saying um, the next president must come from the South. They are not saying willy-nilly. Maybe the problem has to do with the word, the choice of word. Of course, in communication, you must choose the right word from the word basket. You must communicate effectively. But I see this as a decoy by certain Northerners, knowing too well what the Southern government actually meant. What they are saying, in essence, is that they, they, they are going by the rotation uh, uh, president going by the rotation policy that to ensure cohesion, unity in this because already the tenuous legations of our engagement is seriously threatened. And so you can imagine to me, if you even go to the southeast, the Igbos, if we have to talk of unity, if we still want this country, the officials that they, uh, we've already seen on the walls of Nigeria to be mended, they should even go to the southeast. So if when the southern governor say it must get to the south. They are not saying to hell with you, Northerners. Not at all. I don't think that is what they meant by saying to hell, with whether you like it or not. Because even if you talk about numerical strength, whether spuriously or factually, the North has the numerical strength. So there is no way the South would have just done away with the North on the issue of the presidency. It is not possible. So when the Southern governor said it must come to, maybe the choice of word, it must come to the uh, uh, South, what they actually meant was going by the uh, poly rotation principle that we have in this country, the next president should come from the South. That is that's basically what they mean. But this view, the use of the word South, has been exploited by certain mischievous characters who want to use that as an excuse to ensure the emergence of a Northern president. That is my, that is what I deduce from it. Otherwise, it is not, we are not saying to the North, whether you like it or not, willy nilly, the next president must come from the South. That is not what the Southern governors are saying. I don't think that is what they mean. That is the truth about it. So it's just that slanted interpretations are now being woven into the choice of war. That is just the problem there. And I don't think the, any, the Northern governors should rely, dwell on that must, dwell on that shall. It shouldn't be. That would be very unfair. Because if the presidency goes back, if the North not retains the presidency, then we are not talking of fairness. We are in of we talk about fairness, we talk about equity, we talk about justice. I like that. And how are you going to explain those things if the uh, not retains the presidency? Of course, it's going to further fail, test the cleavages we have in this country. So, what my own take, my submission, is that the Northern government should ignore the word shall, should ignore the word must. What the Southern governors are saying is going by the principle of rotation to ensure co to ensure the coercion in the country. It is now the turn of the Southerners. Left to me, it should even go to the Not when really they say South, I know we are talking about North and South. The whole of this side is referred to as the South, the whole of that side is referred to as the North. But it should actually go to the Southeast. All right. That is my take right, on it. Hold on so the we do not on the world. Sir, must. And mandatory. No, we shouldn't dwell on that. That would be unfair. Okay. Um, Ahmed Buhari, I'm coming back to you now. Um, Mr. Nkotari has said that, you know, the, uh, the northern governors are really only playing tricks with, you know, some of those words that have been used and trying to, you know, feed off whatever sentiments, you know, that can be gotten from there. So I want you to respond to, you know, Mr. Nkotari's uh, thoughts. And also, um, in, in the big, I'm sure that, you know, in the past, We've seen some of these same northern governors and northern leaders um, seek, you know, the idea of rotation. They have also, you know, asked that, oh, it's time for the north, you know, and we've heard those things before. Um, but this time, suddenly, you know, from what you're saying, it seems like they now want to be negotiated with, you know, which might seem like, you know, they need to be begged, you know, to allow for the, you know, southern president um, in uh, 2023. Um, does that also seem a little unfair, even if, yes, you've pointed out must and shall, you know, as uh, one of the challenges, but doesn't it still seem a little unfair 
to the south, you know, part of the uh, southern part of Nigeria and to the southeast in particular, and those who have, you know, been made promises to in the past that very likely it will come their way. So I remember during the build up of 2019, when I contested for the office of the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, I made it very clear that um, I think um, the next election cycle should go to the south. At that time, I know a lot of people from the South said it, did, it didn't matter, that capacity was all that mattered. Um, people hear these things, people remember these things. And so when it comes back again, people will tell you, oh, I thought it was about capacity. This is what I think, yeah? I, and, I, and I appreciate the fact that Inkotaria all of a sudden has become an English teacher with um, making us understand that sometimes the usage of certain words would not necessarily be what it means. You know, I, it's hard for me to understand it. I mean, these are highly placed men in society who should who have a lot of following who should always try as much as possible to present themselves in the light that would promote unity and fairness and justice like they, they actually claim but you know when you segregate yourself and put yourself in a regional perspective and say this is what we want uh, you, you send bad vibes to be honest and yes you beg Buhari contested since 20 uh, is it 2011 or so? He's been, no, before 2011, 2003, he's been saying, I want to be president, I want to be president. Until he was able to actually subdue himself, present himself before the South, and begged. It didn't happen for him. Yes, it is politics. That is what you do. That is how you get the sympathy and the support from all over the sides. And you see, you are not making it seem like it's a Northern governor's problem. I remember people like Arufai say the power should be shifted to the south. I remember people like Lalong say the power should be shifted to the south. But when the southern governors saw that a few of the governors from the north are actually tilting their direction, what they would have done was to sit down, even if it has to be closed on meetings, and say, you know what, we really want this to happen. Amongst ourselves, these are the candidates that we have pulled out for the possibility to become president in 2023. We want your support. Do you point us to other people that you think can help us actualize this dream? Not go on air and say, we must do this. And you know what that did? That actually created a divide. Whether we like it or not, in the minds of the people, a divide was created. And each time, each time, I repeat, each time people in this country pull themselves to the side and say, we are Iowa Consultative Forum, or we are the Niger Delta people, or we are the Southwest people, what it does, it actually reminds us that we cannot be united. And it is wrong. What we must do, as, especially as leaders, is to promote what we call inclusivity, unity, put ourselves together. That is what we should do. These men have been into politics for us for God knows how long. And then when it comes to a time when you're supposed to now make sure that we mend all of the broken or all of the problems that we have, the next thing you're going, you are saying you, you have to be. It has to be given to you. It does not have to. In reality, I said it very clearly. I said I've always supported for a Southern president to emerge in 2023. And yes, an evil president. But what are the evils doing about it? Right now, I would have expected the evils to have agreed within themselves to say, these are our four top candidates. Now we are going to go around the northern states, around the western states, around every other part of the country to say, we want this to happen. And this is what we are bringing to the table. Let it happen, please. You don't just sit down and say you put yourselves together and you're going to decide something. You know what is going to happen? The APC is going to probably, probably present a southern president. And that is when the PDP, the other party that is seem to be favored or is having an inclination with the south, southeast or south, uh, south, will now present a northern candidate. And guess what? The northerners will vote for a northern candidate. And again, whether regardless of the political party, a northern might emerge. We must understand the politics and understand that we must, in all sincerity, play this game like it is. It is mm. politics. You cannot expect a man who plays basketball to go into the foot, a football field and use his hand to hold the ball. It will be foul. Let's get it straight. Okay. So when we talk about zoning, rotation of powers and all of that, what really is the underlying reason? To give people a sense of belonging and to create, you know, inclusion. But there but are other people who... Sorry? I said in reality, it is nonsense talk. Because exactly. what, we so, should be talking about, what, what, what we should be talking about is good governance. I mean, all, too, much, too much emphasis is placed on the presidency. Mm -hmm. What are we doing in our local corners to ensure that these things are being done right, even from the governor's perspective? I can tell you for free that...
every governor, the governors in this country are stronger than the presidents. The governors install ministers. The governors install their commissioners. I don't see any president determining who becomes a commissioner in the states. Okay. All we right. should ask them for accountability. We, we understand your point of view, um, uh, Mr. Buhari. Uh, I want to bring in Mr. Inkutara yeah, back but, to the conversation. Yes, go ahead. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, 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 on the issue of zoning, which has just come down, yes, well, I am one very strong proponent of the best to emerge. But let us also not forget that you have the best in every region. However, when you talk of zoning, for now we cannot discard zoning. Because if we discard zoning, a particular section of the society will feel marginalized and that will worsen the security situation in that sector, which is the southeast. You see? So before you talk, before you discard zoning and say let the best in but also we also borrow from the best democracies in the world. Let us look at the um, United States of America, the U.S. In the U.S., you have the college system. Why do you have the college system? So that you take care of the minorities. Because if you look at numerical strength alone, certain states in America will never produce the presidency. And that's why you might have the like, uh, uh, greatest amount of the num greatest number in terms of vote, yet you don't emerge as the president in the United States of America. So you must look at the nuances in every system and in every country and adjust to it if you talk of cohesion. But as certain persons who believe that they have been segregated again, they have been marginalized, and that is where you have this protest. Like the one we have in Nigeria that has assumed a procreative dimension. So we have to be very sensitive to issues when we are addressing them and when we are looking at them. We must give penetrating talk to them. I don't say this. I must tell you the truth. Uh, like you rightly said, they said APC might bring up uh, uh, a northern president candidate, PDP might bring up a southern candidate. No problem, you are going to negotiate. I said initially, I said from the beginning, I said, look, negotiation, confabulation, lobbying, these are key ingredients in election. You cannot dismiss the NSA, even the North cannot dismiss the South. That's the truth about it. Notwithstanding the numerical strength, they can't dismiss the South. So, because in worst case scenario, you're not even going to have an election. Is that what you want? Crisis? Is that what you want? That is not what you want. So and that's where you sit down to negotiate. Ms. Enkotaria, so, Ms. Enkotaria, just sorry? kindly hold on. Kindly yeah. hold on. Um, the question I was trying to ask really was, when people talk about zoning and rotation of powers, first of all, that's not in our constitution. And like, you know, you and Mr. Buhari have been saying, it's something that, you know, both North and South should be able to negotiate to work out how it should be, right? So when we're talking about inclusion of some certain groups, you're saying Southeast, some other people would say Southwest. You know, when we're talking about inclusion, should we now sacrifice inclusion, you know, or rather sacrifice, you know, a competent leader on the altar of inclusion? Is that what it should be? Because there are lots of other economic or political experts that have come up to say that, you know, this zoning really doesn't make sense. Mm, no, 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 no. You can't say zoning doesn't make sense. It does. Because that is what has guaranteed the continuous existence of the encasement to call I mean, what they're saying basically is that zoning produces, no, zoning no, produces me, incompetent leaders. That's what, that's what they've said. I heard, your, I heard you clearly. I heard you clearly. Let me just finish. I heard you clearly. You asked two questions. There are three questions in one. I just answered one. Now, the second one, I had already answered it. I said, in every region, every section of the society, you have competent hands. So if, for example, you say, let the Igbos produce the next president, the Igbos will ensure that their best hands are presented. So that is not an argument whatsoever. In every section, in every region, you have the best hands. You also have the worst heads. So the issue of competence being sacrificed at the altar, it doesn't even arise. Oh. Because if you say, Igbos produce, don't produce. The not that you are talking about, when you say, okay, you not, you talk about numerical strength. I don't know when they look for the best, and in most times they make mistakes. All right, I'm at, I'm at Buhari. Even in the South, in most times, like, I will tell you that most Southerners, most Southerners are not pleased with good luck, Jonathan. I can tell you that. To us, it was an error. Hold so on, hold on, Mr. Gutari. The they the best in it. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm saying, you know, hold on. The best. In, so when they let the best in it, you have the best in every region. Okay. In every region. So that is not an excuse. That's not an alibi. That is the point I'm trying to make. All right. But uh, like you said, is that I've suddenly become an English teacher. That is not the issue. The issue is I see the emphasizing shah must as being proletorials. Just, just a strategy. Oh, we have something to hold on to right now. To use again. Because 
If, if, if you, the Northerners are sincerely interested in producing a South China, what stops the Northerners from coming? Yeah, I agree. Some might be agree because of the choice of word. And he said, given the caliber of people that made the statement, yes, we agree. But my brother, don't forget that there are times you have slip of the tongue. <laughs> All right. So uh, let me, let me, let's bring let's bring okay, back um, Ahmed Buhari. <laughs> Hold and, on, Mr. Ingo and, 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 and go and maintain and maintain the status quo. Now again, it is not in our constitution, but don't forget that when legal imperatives and antithetical to cohesion and legitimate imperatives, we must allow the legitimate imperatives. I'll distance the legal imperative. All right, hold on. We hold must, on. Ms. Ingo Tara, kindly hold on. Kindly hold on. We, we, we need to bring in um, Ahmed Buhari here. Military decrease. Military decrease. Absolutely. But hold on, Ms. Ingo Tara. Um, yeah. I, I, I want to... Um, most of the conversations we're having now are from leaderships on, you know, different levels. You know, Northern Elders Forum, Arewa, or Aneze, Afenifere, many of them. Um, there are different groups, you know, that supposedly speak on behalf of the people. And, you know, we're, we're, the conversations really are starting to sound like these persons, these governors, these heads of forums really are the ones who anoint a president. And it's no longer about the electorate. Um, so, Mr. Ahmed Buhari, I want you to share your thoughts on what you feel from conversations you've had with people from different regions. What do you think the electorate really wants? Do you, do you think that they're interested in the zoning arraignment? Do you think they really would like a power shift to the south? Or they really don't care as long as it's a competent person? W what have your conversations been like with, you know, with the electorate? So I, I just got back from my um, hometown yesterday evening. And to be honest, this, this is uh, the front burner. Everybody is talking about uh, what, what 2023 they want to know. They want uh, people like myself to advise them. But, you know, to be honest, I decided to get the feelers from the people. The people, uh, I would say 50% 50 of, 50 of them do not care what happens, right? The other 50% of them honestly, sincerely do want a southern president. And this is from the north. And Where see, in the north are you um, from? Can you clarify? I'm from Quantawara. I'm from Kontawara, and uh, and uh, th th this is this is what the people want. Um, in all honesty, some of the people would tell you we have tried our own. Um, let's try something else. Hopefully, things might get better. But you see, we need <laughs> for this kind of things to happen. We do sincerely need the support of the South, and the South has gotten got to be politically intellectual right now. They have to be sensitive. They have to be smart. They have to think deeply before they make utterances. They have to think deeply on how to, you know, meet up with the different regions in the, in the country to let them understand that, look, we mean no harm. We want to work together. We want to support you people. We want to think, see things happen. Bring superior argument to the table. Not pull yourself together, have a meeting in the South, Southern governors be having a meeting in the South when you can sit down with your Northern, uh, uh, you know, contemporaries and have the same meetings and, you know, and resolve. In fact, the governors in this country can actually sit down and resolve with themselves and pick one of themselves. And then we in the other sectors can decide we want to challenge them with our own candidate. After all, it's not like we can point out to say any governor is outstanding, to, to be honest. So, um... In all sincerity, I want us to I want us to take a chill pill. I want us to be sensitive um, and understand that the governors who came together to say they want power to be shifted to the south are only doing it for themselves and other people. And all of the things that we're doing here today, all the talks we're having, I wish we were actually focusing on how much achievements the governors in the country uh, the country have achieved. And then we'll now use that yardstick to determine if we even want to see any of them at the helm of affairs when it comes to the office of the president. At the same time, we should also spread our tentacles and understand what is happening in the states, how the, how the state governors are, are actually addressing issues of insecurity, how they are actually addressing issues of policy, what are they doing about local government autonomy that the, that the federal government has actually allowed to happen. You know, all of these things are burning issues that we must put to the table so that we can deflect some of these unnecessary division that is being that has been created by political uh, warlords and make them understand that they have a responsibility to to give to the to pay to the people and it's urgent because time is running out 
Okay, so Mr. Inkutaria, we've been talking about the possibility of dialogue between both governors, you know, on these divides to decide amongst themselves what, you know, um, what region the presidency will be zoned to so that everybody's speaking with one voice and there's some form of unity. But what's the likelihood? Do you see that happening anytime soon? That the northern and southern governors would agree on a meeting and they, they won't back out just a few hours at a time. They would actually fix a time to meet across party lines, across regional lines, come together, meet, and decide on a zone. Do you see that possibility? There has never been a time when um, a particular zone has been excluded from participation. Never. Even when you say the town of the south, you have the northerner. You say the town of the north, you still have southerners who are going to contest. So, um, talking of uh, agreeing, reaching accommodation on prevailing on a particular region not to present a candidate, uh, that would be <laughs> batting on the city wicket. It's not possible. However, having said that, uh, I strongly agree that we need to discuss because that is the only way forward. And I want to tell the likes of Ahmed Buhari to please go back and tell his country that because he has his own followership and tell them to dismiss and ignore the word must. <laughs> they should forget about the governors who sat at the round table to issue that community and consider the electorates who are yet the time of the first fifty percent of the people are also saying let it go to the south. And if you ask me, I say let it go to the southeast. So that we all have this sense of inclusiveness. Everybody believes is one. And that to a very large extent will come trailness in the country because our political engine is overheated and we don't need to worsen it. So if you ask me, yes, it is extremely possible. It has always happened in the past for a, 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 an ambassador to emerge, for an ambassador to emerge, there was a negotiation to pacify the, the, the southeast and the southwest because of the death of NKO. For uh, a year ago to emerge, of course. For a Jonathan to emerge, of course, we also have the emergence of Jonathan was almost truncated. It was almost stratified. But eventually emerged. And the truth is, Jonathan lost in 2015 because it is believed that the mother does serve that is then. That is a general feeling. So we all need to reach accommodation. We all need to agree. All what we are saying, we are not going to war. We have to judge up. We'll sit down to discuss and agree. Of course, tempers are flaring right now, but that should not be used as a yes -tick. That is the point I am making. It should not be used as a yes -tick. Okay. The northern governors, these are governors. Mr. Inkotaria, Mr. Inkotaria, you've been mentioning something. This, let me say this, please. Let me say this, please. Most of these governors are not representing the interests of their state and their okay. region. They are just their psychocentric reasons. That's the truth about it. But unfortunately, they are like the voices. Mm. And that's why we have people like we are people like us sitting here to discuss this thing and to assuage feelings. So it, I'm telling Buari now, Mr. Ahmed Buari, I beg you, as you go back, tell them that get the presidency go to this house. Mm. Okay. And they should ignore the mm -hmm. use of the word, the word. Ah, All right, uh, Mr. Inkotaria, I want to further ask you. No, we, we just have a few. We have just have a few seconds left on this conversation, Mr. Inkotaria. Yeah. So we've been talking about zoning, yeah. and it seems that you know most people are in favor of the South, right? But I've noticed that throughout this conversation, you've specifically said, "I want the South, but I'll prefer Southeast." Are you aware that the Southwest also are clamoring for a Yoruba presidency or a Yoruba nation? So if we eventually settle for the South, do, do you see the possibility of a unity between South and Southwest deciding on who they should bring? Or will still have that division even among the Southern region on which, you know, area, South or, you know, or, you know, Southwest or Southeast, which should now come up with the presidency? There, there can never be a hundred percent agreement. Mm. Even in a family, you have disagreement. There can never be a hundred percent agreement. But majority will have the debate. Uh, like what is likely said, he said even in the southeast, he, he doubts. He feels the, the, the ability of the southeasterners to really come together and present a credible candidate, and that he expected them to start lobbying or to have started lobbying, which is true, which I have not really seen from the southeast. I think they're even settling for vice presidency or something like that. I've never seen that. But however, we are talking of fairness here. 
We are setting the roadmap. We are like gatekeepers. We are talking of fairness here. If they say it should get to the south, we should also all agree, just as we are arguing now, we should all, all agree that let it get to the southeast. I know of the south I'm a rivers man. I know of one, two, three rivers persons that I want to contact for the presidency from rivers. Hmm. But I want to be fair. I want to be honest. Let it get to the southeast. All right. When we get to that bridge, we are going to cross it because that's zone to us. When it is zone to us, then we will now have our own discussion, internal discussion. Okay. Whether even if we say it should get to the south, you will see a reverse man contesting. You will see a Yoruba man contesting. No doubt about that. But it has been zoned to us. Then the, the what is left is just lobby, negotiation, confabulation, discussion. That is what it is left. And All right. Um, Nigerians um, at the end of the day. Hmm. Open up on Gotaria, former um, advisor to the River State Government. Uh, thank you so much for your time and for you. uh, sharing your thoughts with us this morning. And also uh, Ahmed Buhari, uh, former uh, uh, presidential candidate in 2019. Thank you also for your time and for speaking with us this morning. Thank you both. Thank you. All right. And this is where we will be wrapping up um, the discussions on the Tuesday morning. Thank you so much for sticking with us all through the uh, breakfast. If you missed out on any part of our conversations, remember to, where to catch up. It's simply at Plus TV Africa on Facebook, Instagram. Same with our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. I am Osal Gia Ogbon. And I am Annette Felixane. Have a great Tuesday.